Hello, this is Ryan with Deepwood Handcraft. Coming to you from some beautiful rainy springtime weather here in Alaska. Uh, it's been about 50 degrees all week, which is kind of a nice change, but uh, being that it never really gets hot here, you kind of acclimate to the cold pretty quickly. At least that's what I find. Um, I'm kind of suited for the weather anyway, I guess. Uh, but hopefully it'll start warming up and some of this moisture will dry up a little bit. The ground is just completely soggy right now because of all the melted snow and the rain that we've been getting the past couple of days. Uh, so anyway, I've got a shoulder bag here that I just finished up. And this video is more for the fella I made it for. His name is Jay. Um, so Jay, this video is mostly for you, but... You know, I kind of like to show new stuff that we've done anyway, so it kind of works out that way. Now, Jay, I'm going to have to apologize to you right away. This was supposed to ship today, but it didn't. Um, it kind of took me a little while longer than I anticipated working out some of the design things on this and then making those things work. Um, and I wanted to shoot this video to be able to explain some of these things to you and show you how some of them work a little bit. If anything on here is something that you don't like, or there's multiple things you don't like, um, just go ahead and let me know. I will pay to have this bag shipped back. And anything on here can be fixed. I can take the bag apart and uh, take off pockets and put new pockets on if that's what you want. Um, you know, the way I make these things in general, everything on here is repairable so that if, if anything does get damaged, it can, uh, it can completely be fixed without too terrible much of a hassle. Um, not everything can be fixed in the field to a, a permanent fixing, but uh, you know you can. If you do damage this bag out in the field, you can. If you have a decent repair kit with you, you can go ahead and uh, make it functional at least for yourself while you're out. So anyway, this bag is not traditionally the style of something that I would do. But at the same time, it's not far off either. It's just kind of not what I would make for myself necessarily because it's, it's got a little bit of a tactical flair to it even though it is leather. Um, for one thing, it's all black. And this is what Jay wanted, so... We do work with black leather. If you should, work, if you should want some black leather... Um, if you've seen something in the past that looks black, it was most likely dark cocoa brown, and I usually say that in the video, because we don't do a lot with black leather because uh, not a lot of people care for the black leather, but some people do, so we do have it, and we do have the ability to make stuff with it, so. Uh, So right away here on the side, he wanted a uh, a pocket, and he wanted to be able to put a backhoe saw on it, but he didn't want it form fitted to the backhoe saw, so that if he wanted to take the saw out and use the pocket for something else, it would still be functional. And I toyed around with that idea for a little while, thinking about how I could make a pocket that was small enough to fit the back hole saw but big enough to still be functional and this is what I came up with so this top lid opens and you can access the saw from here and if you should want to take this off and not use it I'll show you how that works to make this into just a plain functional pocket in just a minute. Um, he wanted the strap to be long enough to uh, hold a bedroll, or not necessarily a bedroll, but a poncho or some rain gear or a tarp or you know whatever, either underneath. And I've also kind of allowed that it could go up top by not putting anything on the top there. Um, so if you'll notice by looking at this buckle right away it's upside down and I did that on purpose 
so that the slack could come around the back here and go into these keepers on the back and also on the front so your your extra slack isn't just flopping around on you so we'll go ahead and open this thing up and these buckles are a little bit different than what I normally use you wanted brass buckles on it and these have the slack keepers right on them which I really dig these things these are solid brass uh, the style is antique brass and it's the same style of antique brass rivets and uh, I have as of yet to find antique brass D-rings of any kind so I go ahead and antique my own brass D-rings with uh, raspberries is what I use and it comes out looking spectacular in my opinion and I think the antique brass just kind of matches the black a little better because it's not so shiny and in your face kind of has a bit of darkness to it um, so I like it I hope you do too if you don't send it back I will change all this out for you so we open up this bag and it's stuffed with uh, some deer hide just to give it its shape and first things first is a is a little pocket here made of some thinner veg tan kind of keep the weight down and uh, kind of makes good pockets I find or not veg tan I mean French calf and inside here is a wet formed veg tan holder for a Hudson Bay tobacco tin. I'm not sure if you can see in there. If not, just look at any other my other videos or pictures and you'll be able to see what the wet formed veg tan Hudson Bay tin looks like. And there's plenty of room in there to put some other fire stuff. And I've got this bag absolutely stuffed full in the main body. So, uh, you know, likely the gear that you're putting in there won't be so stuffed full as what this is. But anyway, there's still plenty of room in there, even with this thing stuffed full, to be able to put, you know, a, t a tinder sack or something of that nature in there, along with some, you know, ferro rod or whatever. Whatever you want to put in there. Now you did say in your email, Jay, that you didn't necessarily want this to have a uh, draw on it. But I find that in order to keep the lid completely covering the sides of the bag, so like on a day to day where it's kind of raining and sprinkling out, you want to keep any kind of water or dirt or debris from getting in your bag, it helps to have a draw at the very top just to kind of not draw it all the way up, but just to bring it in underneath that lid so that it's covered. So I've accommodated that, and it's uh, it's not done in any way that is hard to undraw, but it kind of keeps itself drawn when it's in there, just the friction from the leather. So on the inside here, there are uh, two little pieces of lace. Well, this is really one piece of lace. And what this is, you'll notice one has a knot at the end and a short bit left over. And then one has a knot and a long bit. And this one with the long bit left over is tied over top of this one with the short bit. So if you pull on this, it'll loosen this up. And what that is for is, see if you can see that. What that's for is this piece right here to kind of hold all this together for the backhoe saw pocket. And that's because this piece snaps off of here. And if you don't want to carry the saw in there, And just carry this piece in the bag or whatever. That piece will pull completely. And then you just tuck that in out of the way. And now this becomes a fully functional pocket all on its own.
So if you don't want to keep the saw in there, you want to put something else, it's probably big enough for like a GPS if you happen to have one of those or you know maybe a couple of tins, Altoid size tins or a bigger tin and some extra stuff, some cordage, um, pocket knife, you can pretty much fit a whole, a whole little kit within a kit in this pocket if you needed to. Um, so that's how that works. If you decide you do want to put your saw in there, then you can just pull this little bit of a uh, lace. And then you pull this one that's got just the knot at the very end of it here while holding this knot with the long piece left over and it'll pull that up tight kind of just cinches tight to itself I know it's probably hard to see but once you get it you'll basically grasp the idea pretty quickly and so that all holds this pretty tight together here so that your saw isn't going to go anywhere So anyway, there's nothing else fancy on the inside of the bag, just this pocket on the outside, wet formed Hudson Bay tin holder inside that pocket. Still plenty of room in there to be able to keep some extra stuff along with that tin. And the shape of the or the type of leather kind of gives you a little bit of play, it kind of has a little bit of stretch to it so that it'll take the shape of whatever you've got in there. draw the main body of the bag up just kind of hold everything in tight under the lid now you may notice that it's kind of turning a little white while it's out here and that's because it's treated with uh, Obernoff leather protector heavy-duty leather protector and uh, that's what I use on everything now because it's just a superior product in my opinion I'm not saying that there's nothing better out there but I will say that I haven't found anything better out there um, and so here soon I'll do a video on leather care and show you exactly what I use and how I do it because a couple of people have been asking for that so uh, that's gonna happen here soon um, so a bag like this would be 300 and fifty dollars I would say off the top of my head I probably have to go back and count up the material cost and all of that um, and so I hope it's worth the wait to you because uh, I think maybe we both had something a little more simple in mind to start with but once I get going on stuff like this if I've got free reign sometimes I'll just kinda go with it and end up with something a little more than what I was maybe anticipating making to begin with but uh, I've put these rivets on here just to kind of reinforce the stitching a little bit and if somebody wants a bag with just rivets then I wouldn't do that unless it was copper post and washer rivets or post and burr rivets and the reason for that is that these rivets are weaker than this stitching and I absolutely believe that um, Justin Wolf from Wolf Customs I think he goes by Grier Wolf on YouTube did a video not too long ago where he demonstrated stitching versus these type of rivets and uh, he showed and I absolutely agree with him that the rivets are not as strong as the stitching so I'll use this type of rivet in conjunction with stitching but not by itself and trust that it's just gonna hold um, nearly as long or as well as the stitching is going to. Now the only exception to that rule I would say would be the copper post and burr rivets and that's because they're just a sturdier rivet and you kind of control the way the post mushrooms around the washer and it's just a thicker post 
whereas these are a hollow post that kind of smash mushroom head on the inside of this head here um, so if you want all rivets then it's going to be copper if it comes from me and if you'd want rivets on your stuff that aren't copper then they're going to have stitching on and that's just the way that I'm going to do it because uh, I just don't trust the rivets to hold over the long run the way the stitching I know absolutely will so uh, that's it for this bag and that's all I've got to show in this video here today there's a couple of people waiting on some projects Ned Stark I'll have your uh, belt pouch out pretty soon here thanks for being so patient over the last I don't even know how long we've been talking about doing that thing but it'll be done here shortly and should be shipping somewhere around the beginning of the week I've also got some big orders going out to canteen shop and some prototypes going out to Dave C so uh, we'll get those projects wrapped up and hopefully get some more videos loaded up as we get some more of this custom stuff going um, so that's it for me today. I'll be back pretty soon. I'll be coming out with a uh, video for Koshtuk Bowcraft in the next couple of days. I got a uh, handmade longbow from him probably a couple of months ago now. Um, and I've been intending to make that video pretty much since I got it because I was just extremely, extremely impressed with the craftsmanship and quality of that bow. So I'll be coming out with that video pretty soon, Koshtuk. Bowcraft out of California so uh, sorry it's taking me so long man I'll get that going pretty soon but I couldn't be more pleased with his products so uh, I'll have that one coming out pretty soon and I've got quite a few more custom orders so I'll be doing videos on that so just stay tuned we'll be coming out with more videos shortly that's it for me have a good day